If you're someone who buys produce with the best intentions of eating healthy all week, only to find yourself throwing away unused produce a week later, then I want to introduce you to a system that can help. If you're new here, I'm Maddie, and I'm here to help you with your vegan meal prep. And if you are interested in learning more about how meal prep can save you time and money, I am going to be opening the Let's Eat Plants meal prep course next week and would love to have you join us. So I'll leave that linked down below. So when I first started meal prepping, I was going to the gym at 6 a.m. and then teaching a full day and then doing private tutoring right after that. So I was usually gone from the house for about 12 hours, and that is how my my husband and I got started with meal prep. We just found it so much easier to do all the grocery shopping and prep in just a few hours and then have it done and ready to go. So now that I'm vegan, I find it even more helpful to meal prep because let's be honest, we eat a lot of veggies on this diet and there are a lot to chop. So even though I'm working from home now, I still look in the fridge at lunch and if I have something prepped and ready to go, I will eat it. And if not, I'll probably eat something like this, which is fine. But then my produce goes to waste. I end up wasting money. And let's be honest, it's not the healthiest choice. So instead, I like to at least wash and chop my veggies so that they are prepped and ready to use. And that way, if I do have to cook, it still won't take very long. For veggies, I will always wash and chop pretty much everything as soon as I get it home from the store. I've actually started using my Vitamix chopping blades. They are so helpful, especially for onions. I really dislike chopping onions, so having the Vitamix is helpful for that. But there are a lot of less expensive options if you don't have a Vitamix, so I'll make sure to link some of those down below. But even if I'm just cutting by hand, I find it so much easier to have the veggies already chopped in the fridge. Now, if it's a more fragile veggie like cucumbers and bell peppers, I will only chop enough to last about three or four days, but the hardier things like onions can stay chopped for about a week or so. And now if I have time, I'll also do a quick steam on some of the veggies and that way they are 100% ready to use in different dishes. So this is for things like broccoli, squash, zucchini, bok choy, basically anything that we eat cooked. With lettuce and other leafy greens, it's best to store them wrapped in tea towels or paper towels and then in a Ziploc bag or in a Tupperware. And herbs are the same. They should be stored in either tea towel or paper towels so that it is just slightly damp in there and that will keep them perfectly fresh for a couple weeks. Most of my fruit I will just keep on the counter and that is for two reasons. One is so that it is ready to grab and go and the second reason of course is to help it ripen. Once something is fully ripe like this pineapple for example, we'll just chop the whole thing and then keep it in either the fridge or if we're not going to eat it all right away, I sometimes put half of it into the freezer. And the same would be like for these tomatoes, they aren't quite ripe yet. So just keeping them on the counter with the other fruit will help ripen them. And then once they're soft and fully ripe, if we haven't eaten them all by then, then they'll go into the fridge and that will slow down the ripening process. For avocado, you know, I honestly don't buy avocado that often anymore because it is so expensive. But when I do, I like to make sure that I am not having them all ripen at once. So I like to cycle them in and out of the fridge. So I'll just take one or two out at a time and let it ripen with the rest of the fruit. Then a few days after I've taken out that first one, I'll take out a second one. And then that one will be ready to eat a few days after the first one. And that way you're not stuck with like six ripe avocados all at once. But if that does end up happening for some reason, you can actually freeze avocados. Just go ahead and peel them, slice them, of course, remove the pit, and then you can use them in things like smoothies or in ice cream. And then for things like berries and grapes, I do wash them as soon as I get them home from the store. In fact, if you want to see my berry washing tips, I'll link that video down below. But especially with things like strawberries that we usually eat once they're cut up, what I like to do is to cut half and keep the other half whole. I find that the cut ones obviously don't stay fresh as long. They're only good for two or three days, but whole will stay fresh for at least a week or longer. So rather than chopping them all at once and not being able to finish them in two or three days, I prefer to just keep half of them chopped. And once we finish those, then I chop the other half. I usually like to cook either a bean or grain or both during a batch prep as well. Now, if you buy your beans canned, you obviously don't have to worry about this because your beans will be already cooked and ready to use. But if you wanna save a little bit of money, you might wanna try homemade. Buying in bulk can save you money, but also reduce on packaging. And it's really easy. You actually don't even need an instant pot. You can definitely cook them on the stovetop or in the oven. And beans actually store really well in the freezer. So you can make a very large batch all at once and then portion them out so that you have a few weeks worth and go ahead and put them in the freezer, take one out each week and they're ready to use. And then for your grain, you can cook something like rice or it can be something like millet or quinoa or even something like pasta. A lot of people are actually surprised when I tell them that I batch cook pasta, but honestly, it does make it so much easier. Storing your noodles separately from your sauce will make sure that your noodles stay fresh, they don't get soggy, and then you can easily just take both out, microwave them together and your meal is ready to go. 
The next most important thing to make during a batch prep is some kind of sauces or dressing. So things like hummus or cheese sauce or salad dressing. So even if I don't cook any meals during a batch prep, I like to at least have some salad dressings ready to go. And that way I can throw together a salad in just a couple minutes. So if you haven't seen the video I did with oil-free dressings, those are some of my favorites. So I'll link that down below in case you wanna check it out. But it could even be as simple as something like making a big batch of hummus, which you can use for both a dip and a salad dressing. And hummus freezes really well too. So you could always make a big batch and freeze part of it for later. Lastly, if I have time, I will prepare some ready to go meals. And what I like to do is make enough to last around three days. I just find it so much easier to make a large quantity all at once. And then if there is something left over that I haven't eaten in a few days, you can just pop that into the freezer, pull it out whenever you need it, and you have a full meal ready to go in a pinch. So if you guys have any questions about meal prep or there's something specific you'd like to see a video about, let me know in a comment down below or you can always DM me on Instagram as well. And if you wanna know how I take a batch prep and turn it into meals for the week, you can check that out in this video right here. And with that, let's eat plants and I'll see you guys next time.